Good morning, everyone. Yeah, I feel like we've got a really beautiful show for you today. Um, a prayer, actually. We're, um, we're going to be talking about commitment and a number of things that have been rolling around in my mind. And I have a special guest with me here today, uh, Jason, who I'll introduce to you again in just a moment. Um, but yeah, grab your cup of coffee and settle in because it's going to be a beautiful show. We're, we're diving into commitment. Morning, everyone, again. <laughs> Got Jason with me, as you can see, and Jason's joining us down in Mexico for a few weeks to just be with us all down here. And just as a result of his coming down, there's been a lot of really, um, it was like powerful experiences and healing happening. And just one of the topics that's really strongly in my mind is this topic of commitment. And um, wow, just a number of other things too, which I'm hoping to pull out of Jason today. And um, yeah, it, it sprang to my mind as we were watching this movie the other night called Fireproof, which is about this man who seems to be the hero of his life and he's very, very capable and it seems like he's doing very well in, in all the areas of his life, but he has this marriage and him and his wife are just really at each other's throats. and. And there comes a point where he has to make a decision, like the, the word divorce is thrown around, and his father asks him if, he's, if there's any part of him that wants to save the divorce. And um, he must have said yes, <laughs> because his father gave him this book, um, and it, it was part of this program called the Love Dare, where he used to take one day at a time for 40 days and move towards his marriage. and. And that's really where he finds a lot of his resistance to commitment, um, really to the spirit. And um, I just found it really powerful because it, it's a bit like what we experience with the course, like we've got this curriculum that's very, very structured to continue to uncover and move through the blocks in our mind. And um, yeah, the commitment just really stood out to me because I watched this beautiful transformation with this man where he, he went from consist, pretty consistently wrong-minded to consistently right-minded, and it's just very beautiful. And so, yeah, I, I feel a little bit vulnerable and raw today because I feel like this is, this is for me, like this is my prayer. And um, so, yeah, Jason, I wondered if you just had anything, either from that movie or just some initial thoughts about commitment that you felt to offer. Yeah, well, I... I too love that topic, especially right now, because uh, <laughs> yeah, the purpose that I came down was, you know, we've been practicing with the community, really letting everybody get in touch with what it is they feel and for a few months, and yet now the heart and the real dedication to listening and following has got to come back in again, and everybody got to see where they made decisions that were perhaps autonomous and and now it's like okay great that seeming freedom was there but true freedom lies in kind of what I was feeling this morning when I was outside meditating I felt Jesus was speaking to me saying that true freedom lies in never letting an ego thought even enter in the first place and in order for that to happen you know you have to make a commitment to the means that Jesus gives because a lot of times you'll hear people say, yeah, I want to wake up or I want God, but, you know, unless they're extremely happy in that moment, then they really haven't accepted the means that the Spirit or Jesus wants to give them to go towards that light. And then they'll say, well, I'm not afraid of the means. Or they'll say, I'm not afraid of the light, but if they're afraid of the means, they are actually afraid of the light beyond. So I know that's where your heart is right now, as you... You just want to recognize the means and you want to say yes to the means and lay down any mask that's there and just, yeah, go for that love. And that movie Fireproof, I thought was, yeah, it was really profound because 
my favorite scene was the first 20 days. He's going for it. He's following all the instructions, just like the Course says. He, uh, you know, he didn't even believe in the Love 40 Day Dare program, but he, he did it anyways. And his wife never once turned into him and said thank you for anything that he did. And he said, this program is stupid. <laughs> You know, but the 20th day, his dad called him, his father, and said, well, what are you really doing this program for? Do you really think it's about getting your wife back? He said, this is a transformation for you, and you have to let go of all the expectations. And God is doing this in your life to transform you. And as soon as he did that, something in him totally shifted, and he realized that this commitment was for him to become better. And then the next 20 days, he worked on letting go of any form outcome to be any different than what it was. So much so that at the 43rd day, he was still doing it and he realized he didn't have to be, but the transformation had gone so far into his heart that, yeah, I mean, maybe you want to share about this, but his wife showed up at the firehouse on the 43rd day and she, she, came, back, <laughs> she came back to him, but he had already gone through such a transformation that it didn't really matter anymore. Yeah, I found that so touching because there was just such a, um, a scene, Jason, one of the scenes Jason's describing is um, his wife has, is, is a reflection of perhaps where mine hasn't turned to accept the means or um, hmm. she's been unaware of the program, but just watching these changes happen in her husband and feeling first very, very confused by them. And then um, temptation comes in, but really the spirit just draws her back to him and he's just there with her as a soft place to land when it's time for her to surrender. And um, yeah, I just enjoyed, as you said, on the, the 43rd day, like the course is done, but like, there's such a, the value is really seen in, in the, the movement in the mind, like the exercises that bring mm -hmm. him into this state of mind. And so there's just such a peace and humility where he's, he's able to really offer support and be a, a soft presence, but there's not a wanting to get anything. It's truly coming from this place of, of giving without an expectation. So yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed that. Very touching. And uh, yeah, just as you were talking, I, uh, there's been a number of, of like sort of uh, attached topics to this in my mind, uh, one of them being uh, stepping stones and temporary commitment. And Actually, no, let's save that one for a little later. I'm thinking plan Bs, actually, because I feel like there's an experience that Jesus describes in the Course that um, we've nicknamed the promise, where like when you, I don't, I don't know the exact quote, but basically when you've accepted God's purpose as the one function you will fulfill, everything just falls away and He just makes the path so clear for you. And I guess uh, what I am really wanting to bring up for myself uh, to move through is that it, it actually feels like there's this deep, deep pull. You know, there, there's something that's absolutely irresistible. And it's like... Uh, David describes it sometimes as going down a water slide, and if you ha don't have your arms tucked in, mm -hmm. it's going to be a pretty rickety journey. Like mm -hmm. it's going to be, the, you'll feel the turbulence of the ego getting hit and hit and hit and mm -hmm. hit and hit. So I think that's why that movie was so powerful as well, because the first 20 days he is, he's looking for some kind of, uh, ex or he's looking for some kind of reflection from his wife to say, good job, he's looking for approval. That, and this has come up as well, it's just a huge block, like wherever I'm looking for approval mm -hmm. is, is a huge block because yeah. it totally is a distraction from actually an experience of going deeper. But uh, yeah, I just wondered if you could share a little bit about that because when we, we move towards plan A, which is God's plan for us, we're going to find where all the plan Bs are in our mind and then seems like part of that is just really fleshing those out and then really looking very honestly at them to see what they're worth to us. Mm -hmm. And we can either choose to continue holding on or to really let go and tuck our arms in down that slide. Yeah, well, a lot of times people think of plan B as like, okay, Jesus is guiding me this way. In a specific, like, go to a gathering or share a miracle here or visit a loved one and 
and plan Bs or anything that conflicts with that. And that's helpful in the beginning when the guidance is around a lot of specifics, do this, don't do that. But like in your case, last night, we got in touch with a plan B being, you know, I want approval, actually. I'd rather have approval from different ones in this community, whether it be elders or other community members, then go for God. And uh, yeah, I've always liked Lisa, both, loved Lisa about this. She always says, great, what, you know, what do people come here for? Do they come for a relationship? Do they come for a sense of safety or comfort? What about God? What, you know, what about God? And, and really that presence underneath. And if you've got that approval seeking mechanism on top, then it's always, everything is put in terms of do this to get the approval, don't do this to get the approval, and you can't really come from, from your heart, from true guidance, from, from extending, and then everything reflects that. And you woke up this morning after we talked about that last night and you could hear the birds, like it was a summer day for the first time, and you just said you had a crack in your mind. just around that presence coming in. And that's the commitment. That's the commitment to plan A, which is presence over approval. Yeah, yeah it was really beautiful. Because it's like there is that irresistible pull. You know, it's so strong that it just when I really get in touch with it, of course, it just obliterates everything, but it feels like being pulled backwards through a knot hole. Where it's like, yeah, there, there's tremendous fear. At least in my mind, in my experience, there's tremendous fear towards just, like, what, if I, what if I really were to accept this? Is my one function like full, you know, letting everything really be used for that? There's a terror there. And it's been so wonderful having you here because, um, yeah, there's just a, whew, wow, there's just a, a deep fear, uh, <laughs> a deep feeling to really move through the fear. <laughs> um, because it's as if I'm standing right on the edge of something, like I can feel it, I can look at it, and I can actually get in touch with the feeling, just that mm -hmm. real expansiveness in the mind of like, there is nothing in the way, nothing. And then it's like, I need somebody to push me out of the airplane or something, <laughs> just jump. Yeah. So, and then, then wow, yeah. Was, um, I've really been feeling that branching of the road section of the course <coughs> where uh, Jesus says, the way you came no longer matters, it can no longer serve. And basically you can't, you've, you who've come this far can no longer make a wrong, can't make the wrong decision, but you can delay, and it's just like, that's the loop. It's like the, you know, I can see it, I can feel it, and I'm just waiting for somebody to push, but nobody's going to push me. I, I need to really see the value of jumping. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, that's my prayer, like to see the value of jumping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and sometimes that value isn't seen until they're, it's also seen there's no choice, which is why we've been talking a lot about comfort and false, false comforts. In that movie we watched, it was actually with Pete and Linda, because they were feeling they needed to make a sense of commitment. they have been talking with Jeffrey and Suzanne. So at the end of the movie, we, I said, so what do you guys feel? And they were kind of like, yeah, we, yeah, we could do that. But Linda was like, you know, I, do, I don't really need to. I can see that, you know, if I've got a comfortable life, the need to make the commitment is there. And so part of our prayer is how to cultivate that need and not cling to anything that's actually delaying us from taking that leap. Mm. And that looks differently for everybody. That's why in the next month or two, this community will be, uh, yeah, we've, we'd all made a commitment for a year to even be here, minimum. I mean, some of us it was lifetime, but for some it was just a minimum of a year. And, We'll be taking a look at that. What does that new commitment going to look like? Is it an increase in time? Is it individualized commitment? Because as long as there's a plan, 
a plan B that can sabotage the spirit's attempt to take you deeper. Yeah, that's stupid, so <laughs> we got to bring that to the light. Yeah, and you were talking the other day, just actually in this whole context of temporary commitments and like stepping stones is another way of putting it in mind, I guess, but like that you can't accept something more expansive until you fully embrace this temporary commitment, until Jesus gives you a new one. But I wondered if you could talk about that a little more too, because you were mentioning it, saying like, um, yeah, the way that you had shared it was that a lot of people don't really understand the value of temporary commitments. Like, what are we actually committing to? It looks like I'm committing to a year here in the community, but it's the the emotions and the feelings that come with jumping into that are disproportionate to the form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, a lot of times, like I said in the beginning, when you say, I'm going to commit to God, or we've even brought it up in this community, okay, who wants to commit for a year? Who feels they can do that? I'd say you always get at least two or three comments, well, I can commit to forgiveness, or I can commit to God, or Jesus, but I, what's the point in committing to a, a form? I don't want to do that, but it's back to what I was saying. They're actually afraid of God, forgiveness, and Jesus. If they don't accept the form that Jesus is giving them, they're actually saying no to forgiveness. <sighs> they're actually saying no to God because what happens is, is when you say yes to the given assignment, whether it be a marriage partner, whether it be community for a year, whether it be to a diet, whatever it is Jesus is giving you, in order to actually say yes to those things, you have to let go of everything else that conflicts with that. And that's the ego. The ego conf will conflict with the guidance, tooth and nail. So whatever the ego is saying against that specific helps you identify its voice. So that's, that's how stepping stones take you in. Here's a step. Say no to everything that conflicts with that step. Vast chunks of the ego just, just disappear. And you, you start to generalize the lesson of, wow, when I listen and follow, no to the ego. And that's why Jesus says, we're going to start working with specifics. And you will, because you don't know how to generalize the lesson. I'm going to forgive. Great. I'm going to forgive. How does, how does that work if the things just keep repeating? But when you actually do a specific, it moves. Oh my God, this works. Another specific. Oh my God, this works. Another specific. Oh my God, this works. Until you start to get that feeling all lined up. Oh my God, it's generalizing. The specifics mm. dissolve and disappear and you're in the abstract, you know. That's my road to mysticism. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I think mine too. <laughs> <coughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, I have in my mind that um, <laughs> We have these online retreats, and um, they seem to be very, very relevant. The topics that are they're chosen, it's like, oh, okay, this is definitely for me. Um, and that's the way I want to experience it, too. So we've just come from undoing the doer, which, yeah, I've just, I have no idea how much healing has taken place there, but I can just feel that it's been absolutely huge in my mind. And now we're coming into stepping into magnitude, so I don't think it's a coincidence we're talking about commitment now and embracing mm -hmm. your life's purpose, so... I don't know how much more I have about that, but something about that word magnitude, like that's what's waiting on the other side of the yes, like that's what's waiting when you really commit. Mm -hmm. Well. The atonement is a total, a total commitment, and and to me that's the magnitude. That's like embracing your true life's purpose is embracing the atonement. And you know, once the doer is done, <laughs> then that's possible. I think that's why we put this retreat afterwards. But it's possible. We're I don't know. We haven't really joined on it, but but still, we're going to look at what is Jesus giving you like maybe a special function? What is it that is a reflection of that total commitment to help you approach or stay in it that he's going to give you? So yeah, this next retreat, 
I floated a few fun ideas at the end of it, like we'll all just to get, get together and discover everybody's special function, but I don't know how you do that <laughs> in a weekend. But yeah, we'll just explore different ways to just totally get into our magnitude. And for me right now, that's, that's just kind of experimenting and trusting that if I stay so riveted on this commitment to, to this present moment that the ego doesn't have a chance on entering. And that's also me surrendering to, to his plan and, and having no control over the world. So that's my individualized guidance for today. Mm. I love that you brought up control because um, I'll just go for it. I love that you brought up control because as we were sitting, um, I just happened to go downstairs and you were listening to the commentary from David's lesson this morning and um, it, a meaningless world engenders fear is the lesson and there's just an invitation in the commentary to, at least in my mind, to really let Jesus write the meaning on the world for me. And as I did that, I could feel like I reached something and then it was almost like you poke the sleeping dragon in the mind. Like I could actually feel something stir, like there's, you know, like presence, 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 and then it comes to this place where it's like, oh, you've, you've touched a nerve, actually. And it literally felt like I'd touched a living animal or something, like a bear that was sleeping. And it, it felt like when I, I was just like, oh my God, Jesus, what is that? That's control. Mm. So I would love to hear anything you have to say about that as well. Because it, like, it has to come up and out, but there's, maybe that's even what the fear is. It's like, what have I even touched there? Mm. How is that going to come out? What is that going to look like? Mm. How do I move through that with grace? Mm. That's beautiful. Yeah, first to acknowledge that and then, okay, wow. Well, the thing is, you know, the ego is directing the mind all the time to stay asleep. And so, to me, the short answer is that giving ourselves over to Christ's control is the true answer because to just go at that by yourself, I think that's impossible, actually. That's like the ego. There's a line that I always loved in the Course that said, when you attempt to hear voice for God <laughs> for yourself alone, you are attempting an ego, <laughs> an ego alien journey with ego as guide. And I was like, wow. To me, that just undoes this whole idea of I'm by myself personally, and I'm going to listen to guidance and then follow it. You know, that's another version of my Holy Spirit. Well, it can be a very early stepping stone to truly undo control. If you want the Holy Spirit to be his guide, you now open your realm from this idea of I'm going to try to hear an internal voice to I'm going to let the whole world, the whole universe, all my brothers and sisters, everything that, I was going to say David, Jesus, everything that gets sent to me, help guide me. Like I was sharing a miracle with you guys yesterday because I, I went to this movie with uh, Ken because we were going to have this deep one-on-one -on -one to really sort through some things in his life and we got he shared for like 10 minutes and i remember david had sent me this movie he, he and his father were going to and i thought and ken had just mentioned the word tyrant and tyrant was in david's description so i thought let's go to the movie but we were like eight minutes late at least and we sat down in the in the theater and i missed at least three to eight minutes i don't like seeing the beginnings of movies and David was in there, so I thought, I'm going to go up and just ask him if he could fill in for me. And I was like, oh, I don't want to bother him. And, and so five more minutes went by, so now he's got to fill me in 13 minutes because <laughs> he doesn't know when I can. <laughs> but anyways, I went up, sat down with some. Before he even sat down, he's like, hey, all this joy welcoming in theater. And he just automatically starts filling me in on the whole movie, like a pure channel for exactly what was needed for my mind to just relax, that actually I didn't miss anything. And it was just, I don't know, I was filled with so much joy. I went back down and I just thought, you know, to be in that space all the time where you're just tuned into what serves the whole in every given moment mm. takes a listening to the whole, actually. And then 
I don't know if this even relates to your question, but then afterwards, he and Svava decided to join us for the big talk. And I sat down, I said a line like, well, yeah, I really wanted to explore this and this and this. And then just Ken's out there and then David just like, yeah, we feel da 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 or this, you know, just sharing some ideas and what do you think? And Ken was like, yeah, you know, <laughs> the whole thing was done in like three or four minutes. And I was just sitting there in this like, I don't know, just beautiful experience of like, I have no part in the awakening. I'm not needed. There's no feeling out. There's no needing to investigate. And it was, it was something about it was really kind of deep for me because even a one-on-one -on -one skill of like, you know, I'm going to join with somebody and feel, no, no, it's still all Jesus' plan and Jesus that does everything. And if you have any, if you have any specific skill that you think you're good, good at, Jesus will use that. But it's still meant to be washed through and undone and surrender into that total letting go and I have no control mm. over anything. So, yeah, it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, that touches on something else I was thinking about too, which is the giving over of skills and abilities. Because when I first came into this ministry, like I love to plan things, except for the show. <laughs> I love to plan things. And I ended up in touring, which was supporting David and you guys, actually. You guys did a huge tour all through Europe, and it was like a helpful retranslation of some of the skills that mm -hmm. otherwise would have been used to sabotage my awakening. And... Um, Yeah, I'm given this new function with PR. It's not a new function. But I feel like I have zero skills in this area. It's amazing. Um, but I just wondered if you could speak a little more about the giving over of skills and abilities. Because this, like, this is the next expansive step to see that like, my skills aren't needed. I don't know if you're able to pick that up at all, but something about it's it's related to undoing the doer, because if I think that I know what I'm doing, I will try to do it. Mm -hmm. But that's why this new expansive step is given, is so that I can see that I don't need to know. Yeah. Well, everybody intrinsically likes to be helpful. It's just, I feel like that's a service. You know, everyone loves to be in service, because it may look like initially like they get positive feedback, they get reflections of, oh, thank you. You know, even in terms of the world, one of the greatest lines that they say is, is um, service to others. You hear that in, like, even the way of the peaceful warrior, service to others. I've always felt it's a limiting statement because it still believes in others, and we take it much deeper than that. But since there's kind of a universal recognition that that's helpful, when everybody just says, okay, I've got these skills and abilities that the ego has trained me to do to keep the self-concept going, to be a good person, to be, to survive in the world. You know, as long as that's there and it's been used, then, then Jesus wants to use those skills that the ego made and line them up first kind of more in the alignment of serving more than just you and the self-concept, but others. But gradually in that, it expands even beyond that and, and, and skills truly given are given over to Christ and new tweaks come in, and new ideas, and things you never thought of. And people are always like, is it this or this? Jesus says, no, it's the third option. And you're like, oh my God, I never would have thought that. And mm -hmm. One of the lines, I think Ricky, one of my first quotes, she <laughs> quoted me was, I've never been happy doing something I knew how to do. And what I meant by that was like, even if you have skills and abilities, if you're operating out of the I know mind, it still doesn't bring you happiness. You still have to give those over and say, Okay, I know how to use a computer. Okay, I know how to make phone calls, but show me how to direct those, channelize them into one way that, that even transcends me thinking I know how to do all of that and, and let me you know, bless the universe and be happy. And so for you with PR, I think that's why you know, you've been in contact with some different ones out of the box where they may come down and work with you and you'll work with them to expand your mind on what you think a Course in Miracles student is or or what what PR even is instead of, yeah. So we're, we're just joining with you on how to expand your perception of PR because you had shared with me that 80% of your time was doing documents. 
and yeah, I don't think that's PR. No. It's not expensive. Yeah. No. no. Hmm. Yeah, it's amazing too, just in the last few minutes that we're here because my experience with those ones, these collaborators that are wanting to come in, is it's literally like an email I'm getting ready to delete. And it's like the, the subtlest little like, maybe you should just follow up with that. And it, like from there, it just, like the one tiny little push, it's like a top that spins. I like to think of it this way sometimes. It's like a top that spins and you just every now and then have to go Foop, to keep it going. Like, it's so easy, actually, and it just unfolds pretty rapidly from there, like, mm -hmm. exponentially. So it's been this contrast experience, even, of when I'm sitting, doing, 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 and then there's this other way that comes in that's like, whoa, I, I actually didn't, I didn't know I could do that. Um, and it's not coming from me, and that's why mm -hmm. it's, it's enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Not enjoyable, it's, it's, it's very, mm -hmm. very wonderful. Yeah. Well, we, one of the stories we just had up in Camus was, I forget who it was. Oh, Andy. You know, he was given the maintenance area and he, Andy didn't, he's never picked up a shovel before, so he didn't even <laughs> know how to shovel snow and he was supposed to arrange all the heat and one of the heat was broken in the office and he didn't know what to do, so he just prayed and laid his hands on the heater and it started working. <laughs> it was like, every, now that is how a true mechanic <laughs> fixes things. It just blew apart, like you had to go in and get the tools out there. <laughs> I like that. When these ones that come into the ministry have no idea how Jesus works through them. Wow. <laughs> it feels like a really beautiful note to end on, actually. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jason. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all for joining us this morning. See you next week. <laughs>